Uh, let's go to Jim in Woodacre. Uh, Jim, you're on with Willard and FP. What's going on? Oh, man, thanks for taking my call, but uh, you switched to baseball. I was call commenting on uh, Draymond. That's all right, Mo. Let's talk Draymond. Yeah, listen, here's the deal. Uh, here's how I look at it. I'm a bit of an older guy, so I've seen a lot of foibles in life. You know what? Draymond is hes almost into anger like, uh, like people are addicted to alcohol. It's like his, he's got to learn. He's learning to get beyond his uh, his bad habit, you know. And, uh, you know, Steph's uh, reaction was like a parent in the sense that, oh, my God, you, you've been straight for a year and now you fell back, you know what I mean? It's not a, you know, he, I think, I believe in Draymond. I think he's learning. Uh, the only thing I felt bad was he didn't seem to really own up to how he blew it, and but, what can we say? That's part of denial. <laughs> well, to me, actually, Jim, that's a big part of the issue. And that's what would concern me. Because if you are talking about whether it's an addict, I don't even know if that's exactly the right word. Can you be addicted to being angry? Yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say it that way. You can have an anger management problem. I guess you could call it an addiction, but I don't think Draymond's like, man, I need another shot of anger. I need a fix. Like, I yeah, need a fix. I need a man, fix. I need a fix. <laughs> Hey, man, oh, that felt so good. You got any more of that anger uh, in there? Yeah! <laughs> Screw you! You got some anger under that jacket. Oh, God, I feel so much better. I'll give it's you a like, hundred bucks. Give me some anger. Doing a shot of tequila. That yeah. felt just like it. I don't I don't think it's an addiction. Um, hey, man, you got some angry on you? I be, need some. It, right. Do you, it have could, a, do you have an angry dealer on speed dial? <laughs> it could be an affliction, not an addiction. Is Remember what, affliction shirts? Those were so bad. I don't. They were terrible. Anyway. Yeah, I'd like... I, Anger management. Um, it's hard. I was a snapper. Sure. I had, I had anger issues back in the day playing. Well, who it's hasn't frustra had it's so, frustrating yeah. to I mean, fail eight out of ten times. But this is that's why I think the conversation is appropriate right now. When you go back to that argument that he's having with the ref, that is the visual of someone who can't control his emotion because... It's not like anybody said you're not allowed to get mad. It was you're not allowed to stay mad. Like, Draymond, you said it. And then you said it four times. And then you said it ten times. And now Steph Curry's tapping you on the chest. Like, okay, big fella, you got it out? You got it out? Let's move on now. Let's move on. Do you remember this is a viral repeated clip? Some people will say that this is the greatest mic'd up moment in all of sports. Do you, and I, I, I'm Grandy or Lucas. Maybe you guys could find the name of the umpire. This thing gets replayed on the internet every year. Terry Collins, I think it was Terry Collins, was the manager of the Mets. Yep, is that right? TC. You know which which clip I'm talking about? Was it the playoffs? Um, I don't know if it was the playoffs, but I, Noah Syndergaard. I think it was. Yeah, throws at someone from the Royals, I believe, and gets hucked out of the game right away. Right away, uh, like he threw behind him. And there had been stuff going on between the two teams, and they had been given pregame or pre-inning warnings or whatever. And so the guy gets thrown out, and the umpire just like he starts with Syndergaard, and then he runs over to Terry, and he tells the other umpire, he says, you take him, I'll take him. And clearly he's got a history with Terry Collins, and he's talking him through this whole thing, and Collins is losing his mind. You got to give us a shot. What about what they did? And they're talking about the league. They're like, the league didn't do anything. And the ump's like, there's nothing I can do about that. We're on the line if we don't do it. Like, it was the greatest conversation. The reason I bring it up is the whole thing ends. Terry's not okay. And he's had it. And he's screaming and his hat sideways and saliva's flying in every direction. And the ump, instead of following him, and instead of screaming his own point, Goes, okay, Terry, did you get it out? Did you get it out? That's good umpiring. Okay, good. You got it out. And Terry's walking away by then. And the ump doesn't follow him, just okay. And I felt like that's what Steph was doing to Draymond Wednesday night. Tapping him on the chest. Okay, did you get it out? Did you get it out? Good. Now let's get back to the game. Didn't stop. Didn't stop. And in fact threw something out that he knew was going to get him kicked out and never even broke stride and left the floor. 
And that's when you know you have someone who's like, it's not just an anger problem. It, it, like, he went to that place. When he goes to that place, he can't come back. And, and, and that's why there's a lack of trust, I think. Well, that, that place and walking that fine line is what makes him so great and gets him fired up for games that you have trouble getting fired up for based on all that you've accomplished. So that place, that fine line he walks, is how he gets motivated. And he'll argue with the ref every now and then. And it's almost like when, I don't know, I thought Steve got a great technical foul. Was it last night that to fire up the troops a little bit because they were flat in the first half? It's almost like he has to flirt with that, that line of managing my anger to get myself going, to get myself fired up for this game when I'm just, I'm just not into it yet. And then when you, that's, that's a dangerous place to be, right? Because yep. if you cross that line, you're a see you later and two ne- technicals and you're out of the game and now your teammates are really disappointed with you. But, I mean, that's the issue. You say that's the fine line that he walks. I would argue he doesn't walk the fine line. It zigzags all over it and crosses it a lot. And that's, so that's, that's different. By the way, uh, one of our YouTubers, uh, Gut Thinker, says that that was Tom Hallion. Is that maybe right? Was it Tom? Yeah, yeah it was Tom. Tom Hallion. Yep. Did you ever you ever have any interactions with Tom Hallion? Tom Hallion's the guy that does the sprinkler strike three call like that. <laughs> I know that's terrible radio. He does the tr- yeah, like, like you're, you're and he doing, punches up to the you're sky. doing kind of like what Tiger Woods did when he won the Masters. He did Steven Strasburg's first game when he struck out fourteen. And it's oh, just wow. like wow, oh. yeah, punch it to the sky. Uh, yeah. I you're call giving, it the sprinkler head. It's a little bit of an Eric Gregg thing that you got going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like Tom Allian? Yeah, good dude. Good umpire. That's okay. the way you handle arguments. Yeah, he was fantastic. The best way to diffuse an argument is say, like, did you get it out? Or I was wrong. Umpires say I was wrong. That's the end of the argument. But Tom, was, I screwed that call up. But FP, that, but, I'm like, but, okay. But Tom, that, this wrong. argument's over. Yeah, exactly. I was. I, I joke with Dibs about this all the time. It's three most powerful words in the English language. I mean, I did it. I did it with my daughter over the weekend. Yeah. She, I mean, we're just... Rah! Dude, Extreme then, Accountability, yeah. a book written by a Navy SEAL, is one of the best books I've read in a long time. And she's waiting for my response, and I just looked at her, and I paused, and I went, you're right. I'm I'm completely wrong. That's here. the end of the argument. And she just goes, <laughs> oh, thank you. What generally happens <laughs> when you... we went inside and made popcorn. What generally happens when you admit you're wrong, the other person will go, oh, I was too. Yep. And then that's the end of it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That Terry Collins did not in this, <laughs> in this particular case. He just went bleep you, and then he walked off with a field. But uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. There are way too many swears. It's going to take me a while. I'll turn it around for you eventually. It's the best. But Tom Halley, the line of the whole thing is, our ass is in the jackpot. Our ass is in the jackpot. That, Terry, the our one. ass is in the jackpot. If we don't do that on the league, our it, ass is in the jackpot. Meaning he's going to get fined? <laughs> Well, he's basically like, we can't, we can't, like, if Noah Syndergaard throws the ball behind someone's head and we let him stay in the game, and then the other team is going to come out and hawk someone off somebody's temple, what do you think is going to happen to the umpires? Who've already nothing. issued a warner? Nothing. Well, yeah. Just like <laughs> usual, nothing. Their asses well, in the jackpot. We never know, by the way. They get suspended. They disappear for a series. They get fined. You just, we just don't hear about it. You don't it. know. Yeah. yeah. They're just home. Although there is still Angel Hernandez. Yeah. <laughs> I never seen <laughs> I mean, where do you think Dibs is this way? By the way, good dude. I'm kidding, by Just, the way. Who, Angel? Oh, yeah, great guy. I disagree. No, he's a nice guy. <laughs> if he was sitting right here doing this show, you'd be like, oh, no, you're a nice guy. I'm all... Yeah, God, that just makes me uncomfortable. Oh, no, he's a good dude. He's terrible. I mean, maybe, but he's just he's, he's a awful nice, at his job. He's, yeah, but it's, it's a very it. unattractive quality to be terrible at your job, don't you think? Uh, maybe he's not a nice guy in the heat of battle, but you see him off the field or you have a beer with him. He just he's a nice guy. Oh, I'm sure. I'm not. I'm. Not, it's not personal. I just don't want him to umpire games anymore in the big leagues. I know. That's all. I don't want bad things to happen. You know, like off the. I don't. I, wouldn't, I don't want. You know, I don't want death to happen to his family and things like this. Do you think, I don't know what the referee's name was that threw Draymond out the other night. Oh, I don't know his name either. Do Who you was think, that, Grandy? Do you think he Do you think he could have diffused that? No, I thought he did a great job. I thought he did diffuse he that. He gave him a pretty long... He gave him a long leash, and then he attempted to walk away. Yeah. He attempted to walk away, and Draymond yelled as loud as he could, bleepity boppity boop, and that was the end of that. Well, the official's most, name is Ray Acosta. Ray oh, yeah, Acosta. Yeah, yeah. Ray Acosta. Yeah, I thought he did a great job. I did too, and 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 I do not usually feel that way. When players get thrown out for two technicals without physically assaulting anyone, I normally 
will say there's no reason to throw them out. But this was this was one of those circumstances. And if you're a lip reader, you know what Draymond said. Yes, you do. At and the it, very end it's there. It's a big old no-no. Yeah, it's a big old no-no. It's a big old no-no. So, anyway, I don't even know. How the hell did we get to Tom Hallion? Oh. Okay, you got it off your chest? You got it off your chest? Okay, good. Go back to the dugout. I thought that's what Steph was trying to say to Draymond. So I just, you got to try something different if you're the Warriors. But that can't be, um, I don't believe it can be trading him. I don't think you can do that. I think you're going to get a bad deal. Do you think they're scared of him? Do you think they, they, it's one I of think, those guys that if you approach and we've already tried everything and if we keep trying these things or we've threatened to suspend him ourselves eventually next year, you can't do this, that they're scared of his reaction, that it could go so far south and he could be such a distraction that they're kind of tiptoeing this fine line of not being scared of him, be, but scared of the ramifications if we like lay down the ultimate ultimatum? I think that you could make that case in the past. I don't think so anymore. I think in the past you could make the case. There's two things going on here. One, the only reason you'd be scared of him now is that Bob Myers isn't in the organization anymore. And he was always the one who knew what to do with Draymond Green. And he's not they, there anymore. Do you so, think they still talk, though? Doesn't, it, just because he's not there doesn't mean they don't talk. Probably, but is he doing it on behalf of the Warriors? I don't know if he's doing that anymore. As Draymond's friend, like, look. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what, what's Bob's motivation to continue to counsel Draymond Green on the behalf of the Warriors. Because they're friends. Maybe. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he does. So that would be a little bit unsettling if I were the current Warriors. But, no, I, I, I think that you can make the case that in the past they probably have been times where they were because he wielded so much power. This guy essentially ran Kevin Durant out of town, one of the best players in the entire NBA. And his relationship helped run Kevin Durant out of town, and the organization one time was like, all right, you have to sit one game. But other than that, they just let him. They let him, and he did, and then they won another championship anyway. So they like there was such power in the fact that Draymond, it felt like he held the key to the Warriors' championship hopes every year, as much as Steph Curry did. But now he holds the key to the play-in tournament. That is not as powerful. I don't know what the Warriors would have to be scared of anymore. So you're saying the juice isn't worth the squeeze right now? Well, no, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm saying that... Um, if you have arrived at a spot where you feel this is now tilted in that counterproductive direction, in other words, I guess kind of what you're saying, this the behavior is not worth the output. Used to be because we would be like the one seed or the two seed or the three seed. Now you're the 10 seed and you're still getting the same behavior and you're getting suspensions and everything. So if, if you feel like that has tilted in maybe your favor, then that gives you the opportunity to go handle it a different way now. There's nothing to be scared of because you don't have nearly as much to lose. The Warriors had so much to lose every year. Now they're the 10 seed. What do you got to lose? Man, I'm so old school, Mark. Like, I, I, If somebody's a constant distraction and it's costing us wins, and maybe it would be a 7th seed or a 6th seed had he been there longer... I just go back and forth in there's some days where I'm like, you got to get rid of them. And then what I saw last night and I'm sure they're doing the same thing there, there, there was, I've been around players that are such big superstars and they're in the clubhouse and you have to tiptoe around them and you have to be careful on what you say to them on a given day. And you got to be careful if you suspend them because they're doing this because then you lose them or they become an even bigger energy vampire in the locker room where they're just sucking the life out of the place so then it's everybody's just kind of tiptoeing around like, I don't know what he's going to be on this day. I don't know if he's going to get thrown out of the game. I don't know if he's going to get the umpires upset. Now I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get bad calls against me because he's saying things. Or is he going to be available? Is he going to get suspended again? How many games are you going to miss? And all of these things are taking energy away from what I need to do to focus to win a game and what I need to do to be successful and what we need to do to win. And that becomes tiresome. Do you think that, that becomes old? That becomes like, oh my God, I'm sick of this. And I think that the Warriors are getting to that point. But then we see what happened last night. 
So I guess the question that I'm having trouble with, and who cares what I think, but like what I'm having trouble with is, is 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 the is there enough in the tank with him to put up with all of this? And last night, for a a glimpse, yes, absolutely. But then, like you said, what's going to happen tomorrow night? And then, what can you expect? And you have to be on pins and needles with like what you're going to get from somebody. Like one one of the, the greatest qualities you can have as somebody you work with or a teammate is that you know you're, what you're going to get from that guy every day as a person. When you walk into that locker room, you know who he's going to be super consistent. You hear this, he's the same guy every day, whether he's 0 for 4 or 4 for 4. Like that's that's something. That's a lot. Because if you have to tiptoe around people and you never know what you're going to get and you're always on pins and needles and you just don't know what kind of person they're going to be and they're not a consistent person, then that takes away from what I need to do to be successful, what we need to do to be successful. And if I have to answer questions on your behalf every day Mm -hmm. and I got to stand up in front of the media and talk about you instead of us and the game, that gets old, man. That gets old in a hurry. It does. So I, I would imagine on the inside, there's a lot of, there's a lot of text messaging going on and a lot of guys talking about like X, Y, and Z. But then you look at the body language last night and you look at how much they were celebrating and they were hugging and, yeah, and it's just like, okay, maybe you check all that at the door in the heat of battle. But I guarantee you there's a lot of guys in that locker room that are just over all of it. There's a lot of guys that are just done with it. And we'll never know publicly. They're not going to say it publicly. I'm sure. But you're, you're also, again, this was a Sunday night in San Antonio. And you won your 40th game. Like, the power is going to tilt at the end of the year based on how it finishes. You get out of the playing tournament, even if you scare Denver. Let's say you take Denver to six or seven games. You know, you somehow get out of the playing tournament and do, do that. It's going to make people feel like, ooh, can't do this without Draymond. You whimper into the 10 seed and lose to the Lakers in the first game of the playing tournament. Draymond, you, you got no juice. What are we worried about? What are we freaking out about to hold on to you for what? So that we can play one extra game at the end of the regular season? Do you think there's teams out there that would say, like, we'll take them? I do. You do? I do. I think he holds a lot of value for some of those, like, young up-and-coming playoff teams that don't have a lot of, like, attitude or energy or playoff experience. An Oklahoma City, an Orlando, a Cleveland, teams like that, I think Draymond would hold a ton of value. The Kings? Sacramento Kings need a Draymond Green. Um, oh, okay, here. This is Tom Howian and Terry Collins. Oh, let's go. Yeah, here it is. Take him, take him, take him, take him. Terry, 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 Ter
the, the whole thing is a good three minute experience. People are s- switching off umpires. It's hysterical and it's amazing. And Tom Howian comes out of it looking like an absolute G. Like, what a great job. There's a quote here in this article I'm looking at. I know we got to go. I was just trying to let Terry vent his frustration, and I've got enough respect for Terry to do and say whatever he wanted to say. But I also want him to know that we were doing our job and in that situation. Uh, we have to throw Syndergaard out our asses in the jackpot. Our asses in the jackpot. <laughs> I also have a piece of breaking news. Well, I gotta steal that. You do? It's twofold. Number one, Terry Collins has a YouTube show. Apparently, he does. That's the one part of it. The other part is that Tom Hallian will be going on that show next week. You're kidding me? How about that? Let's get Tom on. Great timing. Wow! I didn't even know that when I brought it up. That's amazing. I'd love to hear that. Will they yell at each other like that on the pod? I'm going to go now. I think the name of the podcast is Ass in the Jackpot. <laughs> I'd, I'd listen to that every day, wouldn't you? Let's if go. If you hit the Powerball tomorrow night, do you get Tom Hallian's ass? Does that happen? Is that in there? You get a billion dollars in Tom Hallian's ass.